Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this very quick and simple poster in Word. So I'm just going to open a new document. And at the moment, this is just an A4 page with default settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go up to the insert tab up here, go along to shapes, click on the drop down, and go down to rectangles. Then, as you can see, my cursor has changed to a cross. I'm just going to click and drag out a rectangle. You don't have to be too accurate with this because you can just move things around. I'm just going to stretch it across my entire page. And now I need to customize this rectangle in terms of the colors. So I can either double click or select my rectangle, go to shape format and go over to format pane. Now here you'll find this menu with several different options. If you go to the bucket icon, go down to fill and then go down to gradient fill. Now gradients are great because you can really play around with them and fully customize your shape. Now I'm just going to get rid of these two markers. Now the way gradients work is you select a marker, you change the color, and then you move it along this slider to change your gradient. So I'm just going to get rid of this one, select it, go to the minus tab and get rid of it. And then also this one here, just press the minus tab. Now I'm just going to change the color of this side. As you can see at the moment, this is white. And as you can see on my gradient, it's white at the top. And then along here, you can see that it's blue and blue at the bottom. Now up here you can fully customize them in terms of your gradient types, whether it's linear or radial. And then let's just move this over. If you have got radial, then you can go to this option and select from these different gradients. And these are more about the direction in which your gradient will go over your shape. So if I select this option here, this marker, go down to color, click on the drop down and select any color of your choice. I've got recent colors here. If you don't see the color you want, go to more colors, go to your color wheel, and then select by moving this cursor around. Once you've selected your color, you also have the choice to use the slider to make that color lighter or darker. And you can see the color you've selected in this square here. So if I just go over to color, and select my color and then I'm going to go to this marker here you can tell you selected it because it has an orange outline click on the drop down and select your color now at the moment I'm on radial I need to change it back to linear and once I've changed it to linear I can select from these different options about the direction and for this particular rectangle I'm going to select linear right and there's a little bit too much yellow in this one for me, so I'm just going to move it over to the right. And as you can see, I fill more of my shape with green than I do of yellow. And then once I'm happy, I can go down to line because every shape that's inserted into your document will come with an outline. And we don't want it for this particular poster, so I'm just going to click no line. We're going to add some shadows to this eventually, but I'm going to leave that to the end. The first thing I'm going to do is to duplicate it. Now you can duplicate this in a couple of ways. You can click on it, go to Command or Control C, click away from it so you haven't selected it, then Command or Control V, or you can select it, press your Alt or Option key, you see my cursor's changed, just click and drag, and that will select out a new shape. So we need to click away from it because we'll have selected two. And I'm just going to turn this one all the way around using this icon here, this circular icon with the arrow. And then I'm just going to change the size. And to do that, I just hover over one of these squares and drag it in the direction I want to move it. I'm going to pull that up a bit and again I'm going to change the direction of this gradient so select the shape go back over to the bucket icon and then I'm going to go down to linear direction to ensure it does what I want if I select that one there we go and the gradients over to the left again I'm going to go back up to insert shapes and then I'm just going to select a circle now, when you click and drag out the circle, you'll get all kinds of oval shapes. To ensure it's a perfect circle, just hit the shift key 
and you'll get a perfect circle. Once again, we're going to fully customize this. So back over to your menu, gradient fill. And because we've used this gradient before, we can then just fully customize it with those colors already inserted. I'm going to go down to line and select no line so we don't have that outline. And then once again, you can use this rotation icon to rotate your shape. And again, I'm going to hit the Alt or Option key and simply click and drag out two more circles. In fact, I think it was three. So let's just click out another one. And then you can see these two are selected. And if I do that again, I'm going to select and select two more, which I don't want. If you want to go back, select Command or Control Z. So click off, click back on the circle, hit the Alt or Option key, click and drag. And now what I need to do is just to go around and make sure these are all placed and all the right shape. If you grab the circle without hitting the shift key again, it won't be a perfect circle. I just want to place these appropriately around my document. Now, if you want to change the position of these shapes, so for example, this one is behind this one, then select it, go to shape format and go over to these two icons here, bring forwards or send backwards. So if I want to bring that one forwards, I just keep clicking it until it comes forwards. There we go, I've clicked it twice and it's come forwards because Word acts a little bit like Photoshop in terms of its layers when you insert shapes and images. So we've got what we want here. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. Don't forget the shift key. Okay, so once you've put all of your shapes where you want them, we're going to add a shadow. So I'm going to click on this shape at the bottom here, go up to this icon here, go down to shadow, click on the drop down, and then go down to presets, click on the drop down, and then you can select from any of the different options here. I'm going to select this one. And then I'm also going to customize it by using this blur slider. Now this really is a personal choice here. You can play around with all of these sliders and it will adjust the angle of your shadow, the size of your shadow, you can have it bigger or smaller, and also the transparency. So you really can control your shadows. Again, I'm going to go to this one here and then down to the presets and I'm going to select this one. And using that blur, just to blur out that shadow. Same one here, but a different direction. This one here. Again, blur that. Now, it would have been easier to copy and paste these, but of course, with the different directions, sometimes it's easier to just go over and select the direction first, then customize it. Okay, the next option is to put our text in or the next thing to do. So we're going to go to insert, text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box. And then we're simply going to click and drag out a text box. We're going to insert some text. Then I'm going to customize that text. So select it, go to home. I'm going to select from the font Brasilia. I'm going to select bold. I'm going to increase the size by using this icon here that's increase font size. And then what I'm going to do is go down to the text here and right click and go down to font. Now there are lots of different options you can do with your font. They're not always available in the home tab. This particular technique will actually put a gap between your characters. And this is the only way you can do it. Once your menu appears, go to advanced, go to character spacing, go to spacing, and I'm going to space out mine by 10 points, center 10 in there, and click OK. Now it's going to change it somehow to this text here. So if we go over to font and I'm just going to go down and find Brasilia because for some reason it seems to want to change my selection to a default. There we go. And then just click OK. 
If this happens, just grab one of the boxes at the end, click out and drag. There we go. We can just place that where we want. Now, if I click away from this, you can see that this text box has a black border and a white background. We need to get rid of both of those. So select it, go to shape format, go to shape fill, select no fill, go to this icon here, shape outline and select no outline. And then we want to change the color of this text to white. So double click inside the text box, select command or control A to select all of the text or just click and drag. Go to the Home tab, and go to this icon here, which is your font colour. Click on the drop down and select a colour. And because we've customised all of this box and we just basically want to repeat this and just customise the text. So all we need to do is select it, hold the Alt or Option key down, just click and drag. Click away and click back on that text box. Double click inside, Command or Control A and then just enter your additional text. And as you can see, it's disappeared. Don't worry, select Command or Control A again, go up to the Home tab and go on along to this icon here, which is Decrease Font Size, and just keep clicking that until you're happy with the way that lies. So we're currently at 16, I'm gonna go for 17. And then you can see that that text just about fits the text above. You can play around with this as much as you like. This is just for exa an example, so go ahead and be as creative as you like. Now, once you've done that and you're happy with the text, if you select this bottom text, hold your Command or Control key down, select the text on the top, go to Shape Format, go along to Group, click on the drop down and select Group. You can now move this round as one unit. If you need to undo that, just go backwards. So go back up to Shape Format, Group, select Ungroup, and then you can go ahead and customize it. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.